Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, we're gonna go over creating a GPG key pair, as well as go over a couple of management related commands that you might wanna do in your day to day, such as being able to edit your key, uh, edit your passphrase, set up a revoke certificate, and even export your public key, as well as backup and restore your keys. So what is GPG? Why should you care about it? Why should you use it? What does it stand for? So the TLDR is, it stands for GNU Privacy Guard, and it's an implementation of another encryption standard called PGP, which stands for pretty good privacy. Now, I don't wanna bore you with the super details about that, but it basically works with asymmetric keys where you have a private key and a public key, kind of similar to how SSH keys work, but that's about where the similarities end. Now, as for why you might wanna consider using it, uh, there's a couple of reasons. One, you can encrypt files using this, and uh, that's pretty, pretty nice, right? If you wanna send someone some content and you don't want anyone in the middle to be able to read it. Uh, also, it's really useful for proving your identity. So, for example, if you uh, work with Git, right, you might be working for a company or maybe you just publish some open source work or you want to contribute to some open source projects, you can actually use your GPG key to sign your commits to basically verify that you're the one actually doing it. So if you contribute to some projects on, on GitHub, uh, they may actually require that you sign your commits. So it's a good idea to set this up. And lastly, it's very, very useful if you use a command line password utility, like a password manager called Pass. Now that's a tool I've been using for a number of years. I have something like 350 passwords in there and uh, it basically uses your GPG keys to handle the encryption of all of your uh, secrets that you wanna store in this password manager. I'm actually gonna make a dedicated video about that tool later on, but I figured now I'll just make like an independent video on setting up uh, a GPG key pair because that's kind of like its own isolated thing. Okay, so let's get rolling here and make sure that we have GPG installed or install it if we don't have it already. And you can check by writing GPG dash dash help. And if you see the help menu, then you are good to go. If not, then you'll want to install it using your package manager of choice. If you're running uh, Debian, Ubuntu, or some type of Debian derivative, then you can just apt get install uh, GNU PG here and you're good to go. If you're using a different distro, then you'll have no problem finding it in your package manager. And that includes Mac OS as well using brew. So now that we have this installed, we can actually generate our uh, GPG key pair. But I'm gonna do something very, very slightly different. And don't worry, we're gonna all be uh, executing the same commands together, except for this one command here. So by default, GPG is going to create all of its files in your user's home directory. So I'm logged in here as a user, Nick. So it's gonna create a .gnu pg folder in your home directory, and that's where everything is gonna be. But in this case here, for the sake of the video, I do not want to mess with my existing keys. I wanna make sure we're all on the same page here, starting from scratch. So I'm going to customize my GNU PG home directory just by exporting this environment variable. So I recommend that you do not follow along using this step here because you will want it to be in your user's home directory, not in this temp directory. Uh, so now uh, with that out of the way, let's first see if we actually have any keys here. So you can run list keys here. And yeah, since I created this in a separate directory, uh, you may actually get this as well in your user's home directory. It's been a really long time since I created uh, this from scratch, but notice here it says like warning unsafe permissions. So you can fix that by running uh, chmod 0700 on the, uh, the path there to the directory. In your case, that's probably gonna be, you know, your home directory and then .gnu pg here. And then with that out of the way, we can just rerun the command and we're good to go. Notice how, you know, there's no keys here at all. This is uh, a clean slate. So let's generate our first key by running gpg uh, dash dash full generate key. And then from here, we can get rolling. Uh, step number one is picking uh, what type of encryption I guess we wanna have our key uh, set with. In this case, we have a whole bunch of choices here. We're not gonna be creating like a sign only key. We're gonna be uh, have the ability to sign things and encrypt things and basically do everything. So let's just go with the default here, which is a number one. Then for the uh, size and bits here, we'll choose 4096. Technically you can use a lesser value, but then you run the risk of having your key uh, being compromised by, you know, a bad actor, someone with a really powerful computer or sets of computers. Uh, basically, this controls uh, 
the number of bits here for uh, the RSA key that, that gets generated. Uh, I highly recommend you choose 4096, do not go lower. But for the sake of the video, I am gonna go lower because generating a 4096 one actually does take quite some time, uh, a couple of minutes, but it really depends on your current CPU speed. Uh, then we can set an expiration date on the key as well. So I do recommend that you set an expiration date, but if you choose not to, you can always enter zero here. Uh, it's a really good idea to set one because if your key were to ever get compromised, like let's say, and you know, I don't have a laptop here, but if it did have a laptop and the laptop got stolen, you know, it's really good to know that this key will just expire on its own after like one year or something like that. We're also gonna go over how you can actually revoke your key right on the spot. Uh, which is a very good thing to be able to do. But in any case, still being able to set an expiration date, just so you know, like if you know, if like worst case scenario, things get stolen and, and like your backup doesn't work for some reason, so you can't revoke it, then at, at least it'll expire at some point. Also, it's super easy to come back in here later and renew this. So you're not gonna have to like go through the motions of creating a brand new key if this thing expires. You know, we'll just go ahead and uh, update it and I'll go over how to do that pretty soon. So let's choose one year here for the expiration date and then that is all good to go. So we can hit yes to that. Then you can just pop in your real name here if you want. Uh, you know, this is basically your identification. You know, I'm not gonna put in my real email address here because I, you know, my real key is associated to that. And uh, I do trust that custom home directory thing, but still I just don't wanna clobber any existing keys just by choice here. But, uh, and keep in mind like this email is not gonna be sent out to you specifically, like this command is not gonna like shoot you an email. So technically you can put whatever you want. I'm just gonna go with example.com. I do recommend though that you put in your real primary email address just so you know, right? It's associated to you. And then from here, uh, you know, we can put in a comment, but let's not do that. Everything is good to go, so let's hit okay here. And now it's time to set up a passphrase for a key. This is very, very, very important. Uh, you should choose a passphrase that you can remember. So don't just put in like, you know, like 64 crazy random characters. Uh, this should be something that you can just rattle off from the top of your head with not having to look it up. Uh, I'm gonna go with the password of password here. Highly recommend that you just like string together a whole bunch of random words. That seems to be pretty nice for remembering things without you know, trying to figure out what's like, what's the money sign and exclamation point, like a character three, like, you know, just pick some words that you can remember. And then from here, uh, it says, you know, I guess my uh, thing is pretty insecure here, but I'm gonna say, uh, take this one anyways, because it, you know, it's just for the sake of an example here. And then we're gonna have to confirm that we typed it in uh, just to make sure that we're not crazy here and we didn't use the wrong password. Now it is saying here that it's a good idea to perform some other action here, right? Like type on the keyboard, move the mouse, open some programs, uh, things like that. Basically we're creating a random entropy for the password being generated. Um, if you do use 4096, then I mean, chances are it's still going, I guess, maybe to create your key. I, I, I can't really, see what's going on with your computer. But if it's still going on and it's hanging there, then yeah, do all these things, right? Open up a new terminal tab, start typing away, uh, do all of that. That's just gonna make sure that, you know, things are a little bit more secure. So now that we have our key, we can see that it expires a year from now. You know, there it's set up for my name, my email, and here's some other uh, information around that. So now if we go back here and we do list keys, then we should see that, uh, you know, it's no longer, uh, an empty output, right? We have the key that we just created. So that is amazing. Uh, but now let's say that it's about a year in the future, right? It's now almost 2021. Assuming uh, we're all still alive here, then, uh, you know, let's say that you wanted to update this expiration date. And we can do that by running GPG, edit key, and you want to pass in your email address that you put in here, which in my case was nick at example.com. And then from here, uh, we will do list. We can just run a command here. Cool, so we can make sure you know we're dealing with the same exact key that uh, we should be editing because technically you can create things called sub keys and there could be more keys listed here associated to your, to your main key. So let's pick uh, key zero here, which is the first key in the list. Again, if you had multiple sub keys, uh, you know, there could be, you know, three keys here and then, you know, there's zero index. So key zero is going to be uh, the first one. Then we will go and run the expire command. And now from here, we can just be like, well, okay, let's expire this uh, in a year. But for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna choose two years so we see something different, right? Because uh, normally you wouldn't renew your expiration date like literally on the same day that you create the certificate or not the certificate, the uh, key pair. I'm so used to like SSL certs. So this is all correct, good to go. You're gonna have to put in your password of whatever you put in. And uh, there we go. We can see also that uh, now it expires in 20, 
uh, 22. So that thing has been updated, but you know, it didn't write it out to disk yet in, in the sense that like our keys are not updated yet. So the very last thing that we need to do is we need to save it. And now if we go and list keys again, then notice the expiration date is uh, another extra year in the future and we are totally, totally good to go. So that's a really simple way of, you know, how to create a key, how to update it. You know, there's other commands that you can run besides expire. So if you wanted to, you know, update something else, you can always take a look at the documentation for that. Chances are you're probably not going to ever need to do that. So I'm not going to bother covering that on video. But now let's go over maybe something else, right? Like maybe you want to change your passphrase. So you can do GPG and you can run pass uh, WD there for your actual ID here. You know, and nick at example.com, yours is going to be different. And when you do this, uh, the first thing you'll have to do is put in your current passphrase. And now it's going to be like, well, let's enter a new passphrase. Um, so I'm going to do password, password one there. There we go. And there we go. I just changed my passphrase. So that's pretty handy, right? Like maybe for whatever reason you decide you want a new passphrase, that's good to, good to do. And uh, speaking of passphrases here, you know, the passphrase that you chose should be quite long of just like a random string of words, something you can remember. You know, I don't know what your memory is like for me. It took me quite some time to remember mine, so I actually did write it on a piece of paper, but I actually put it in like a lockbox, like, you know, in some area. I'm not even gonna say like, possibly in my apartment, possibly in a bank box, like it's somewhere. So in case I forget it, like it's there for me to look at. You know, it's not really worth putting that in digital form somewhere. Like don't just put it in like a notepad document, you know, on your desktop or laptop or whatever. Uh, that would be very bad because this passphrase is like your last line of defense. Like if your machine were compromised and someone boots up the machine, you know, they can't really do anything too bad unless they have that, unless they have that passphrase. So keep that protected uh, as much as possible. So now let's actually uh, go over the next topic here, which is creating a revoke certificate. So, you know, as we know, this thing is going to expire in two years because I updated it for that. But let's say that uh, you want to expire this like today, right now, because something bad happened and I don't know, you just want to expire it. Ah, hello there. This is Nick from the future. In other words, I was editing this video and I caught something pretty interesting related to revoking your GPG key pair. And that's a topic we're about to go over over the next couple of minutes. So originally I recorded that we would create a revoke certificate and then we would import it. And that import action is what uh, revokes your GPG key pair. And that's still the case. That's the same thing as today. But I realized uh, during the editing process, I noticed that a revoke certificate was created automatically when you actually created your GPG key pair. And that was news to me because this just started to happen in a very modern version of GPG. So if I bring up the change log here, if you're using GPG uh, 2.1 or above, that's when this new behavior was added to create a uh, revocation certificate by default. So when I created my keys like five or six years ago, that wasn't the case. You had to create your own uh, revoke certificate, but now we don't. So if you're running Ubuntu 2004 like me and you have GPG version 2.2, then you can actually skip creating your own revoke certificate because it's already been made for you in this directory. But I'm still going to leave in the method of creating it manually in case you are using an older version of GPG. And when it comes to importing it, it's all the same in all versions. But yeah, I just wanted to uh, splice this in here so you have that extra context. And with that said, uh, let's resume into the main video. So you can run GPG uh, output here and we can just, I don't know, give it some like file name here. So I usually call it like revoke and then my ID. So I would just do like Nick example, something like that. You know, you don't need to put in like the at symbol or the dot com. It's just something like you'll know to remember. Uh, then that is going to be uh, dot ACS file uh, or ASC file. And then uh, we are going to gen revoke and then we have to pass in uh, our ID. So that's going to be nick at example.com. That is going to be different for you. This is actually not going to like do anything bad right now. This is basically just creating the revoke certificate. So we want to do that. Yes, we do. And, uh, you know, we can choose to put in a reason for this revocation or revocation, whatever, however you want to pronounce that. So, you know, let's say that your laptop does get stolen, right? You can choose number one here, like key has been compromised or something like that. So let's uh, go with one here. And it's kind of interesting too, they actually say like, you know, that is probably what you want here, right? Uh, the reasons to revoke your keys are very, very small, right? It's basically if it's been compromised. Uh, optional description, yeah, no worries on that one. We'll keep it empty. Everything is good to go. And then you're gonna have to put in your password of what you have, or as your passphrase. And uh, now if I actually take a look here, 
then uh, there should be a file in my temp directory call at least with the with the word Nick in there so okay it looks like I have some drafts open whatever uh, this revoke certificate is here this is the one we were taking a look at um, you could choose to back this up as well. Uh, they, th I say they because, like you know, privacy experts recommend that you back this revoke certificate up separate from your actual GPG key pair. So, like in a different location. I mean, that is a good idea technically, but it's one of those things where, like you know, I, I back it up in the same spot. You know, maybe okay, that's bad. You know, slap me on the wrist. I, I don't know the implications of that. All I know is I've been using this stuff for years and years and years, and I never had any issue backing it up all in the same place. So, you know, I'm going to recommend do the same. At some point, you have to like draw the line between convenience and uh, just, you know, sake of privacy, right? It's like, well, do you want to like actually open up a separate like lockbox at your bank and just put this in there? You could do that if you want, but like the convenience factor for that is, uh, you know, kind of annoying. So I just back things up to an external drive on site, like, you know, in my apartment. I also have that backed up in another location off site. You know, I guess best practices, right? Just keeping things backed up. So now that we have this certificate uh, out here, right, this file, we would put this somewhere on disk, you know, back it up however you want. But that didn't do anything yet. Like we just created the, re the revoke certificate. The next thing we need to do here is uh, use this, you know, import the certificate here or specifically the revoke certificate. And once we run that, then that is going to revoke our key. So now if we actually do a list keys here, then we can see that it's been revoked. So, you know, let's say that we were using this key to, I don't know, unlock passwords from a passwords manager, like it's it's no longer going to work. We would have to generate a new key. Uh, but there you go, you know, that's how you can revoke a key. Now, let's talk a little bit uh, about backups. So there is a number of ways to do this, or are a number of ways to do this. If we go to uh, this directory here and we take a look at what's in there, uh, you know, your contents are gonna be about the same. Of course, it's gonna be in a different location. And also, let's get some more room here. Um, what I recommend, and I honestly don't know if this is the best idea, but it appears that uh, a lot of people do agree with this method. I find it's just easier to back up this entire directory, you know, zip it up and then, you know, back it up to wherever you want to back it up to. Because then we get everything. We get the trust database, we get all of our uh, private keys and basically the whole configuration. And I've actually, you know, done this backup and restore a number of times. So as you can see here, you know, I'm running WSL2. But uh, when I migrated from WSL1 to WSL2, and prior to that, when I migrated from a Linux VM to WSL1, you know, I moved around this whole directory from VM to WSL1 to WSL2, and it was super painless. I just moved it over. You know, I made sure when I zipped it up that all the file permissions were good to go, and uh, yeah, it was, it was very, very, very easy. Uh, there are other commands you can run just to export your private key individually, but uh, I'm not going to bother going over that because really there is no downside to just backing up this whole directory. Uh, so I recommend doing that and then restoring it. Super easy, right? You just throw it over into your home directory in the dot, uh, GNU PG folder and uh, everything will just work. Like if you're using that, that pass password manager, then yeah, it'll just start working, uh, which is quite nice. So that's how you can back up and restore things. But lastly, I'm gonna go over uh, one last thing here because uh, and I'm not going to get too deep in the woods on this one, but, you know, one really great feature of using your GPG key pair is to, you know, sign your Git commits. And if you're using GitHub, uh, there's a setting that you can set. And I'm going to make a separate video about this one, by the way. But basically, it involves you having to upload uh, basically your public key. So let's go over how we can get that value out. And uh, that is not too bad here. We can just, you know, export. And this armor flag here is going to make sure that um, our key is exported in text format instead of binary. And then the last thing we want to do is provide our ID here. And if we run that, then we're going to get this uh, public key block here, which is pretty long, right from here, like the dash, 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 all the way down to the bottom here. You know, you would basically uh, copy this out. And uh, there you go. So that is your public key. So also just a heads up, um, you know, when you're working with GitHub's UI, they're going to expect you to copy that whole thing in. But you can also choose to output this to disk. So you can do output, I don't know, like Nick example, uh, example, and then you can do gpg.pub or something like that. The file name doesn't really matter. But uh, when you do this now, and if you take a look here at this directory, then it should be in here. Did I mess something up? Because it's not. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Oh, you know what? Maybe that needs to be at the very end. Let's see. So Nick at example, 
Com. There we go. So we didn't get any output there, but if I do an ls in here, then uh, there it is. So there is that same public key we just took a look at, and if I just cut that out, we can see it's the same thing. You know, that output flag is just a shortcut to get it written out to a file because, you know, you may want to send that file to someone so they can import it into their GPG key ring. Now, one last thing I want to go over here, uh, which is pretty important because it's sort of kind of annoying to have to enter in your passphrase every time you want to access something that uses your GPG key pair. Like for example, you know, if you're accessing password with your password manager or you're assigning some commits or something like that. So if I go into my real GNU PG folder here and we take a look at this, then, you know, there's nothing uh, I don't mind sharing here. Uh, there is a GPG agent config file, this file right here. So you'll want to create that, that file. And if we take a look at that file, then there are some values in here where you can basically tell uh, GPG to cache your password for a specific amount of time. So in this case, it's going to be in seconds and 604,800 seconds is one week. So if you have your machine on, so just, you know, a heads up here, I am running a workstation. It's in my apartment. I don't bring this anywhere. And if, you know, if I were to get wrapped, like someone would literally have to like come into the apartment, take my machine, unplug it and like do bad stuff with it. Right. So when you, when that happens, right, when the power gets lost to your machine, then this is not going to like, this is one week, by the way, seven days, you know, it's not going to be valid for seven days across like a reboot or turning the power off and turning the power back on. It's only going to be like if the machine is on for, you know, three days or something, it's going to cache your uh, passphrase. So you don't have to keep entering it. I find that's a pretty good balance between security and convenience. So you want to make, uh, if you want to do it, you'll want to make that uh, GPG agent, that config file, and then set this to whatever value that you want. You know, if you're running native Linux and you don't have to reboot pretty often because uh, Linux is amazing, then you may want to set this to a higher value. But on that note, that is pretty much everything I think I want to configure here, or not configure, talk about here, uh, when it comes to GPG key pairs. So we covered creating a key, editing a key when we did the uh, expiration date. We went over, uh, yeah, I mean, setting up the revoke certificates as well as uh, exporting your public key and backups and restore. I feel like that covers like the 90% of what you would be doing. Of course, you can always check out the man pages here for uh, GPG to really get into the gory details. There's a lot more that you can do. But uh, honestly, you know, this is what I've been using in my day to day for years and it works quite well. Uh, in the future, I am going to make a couple of more videos about how we can actually use this, right, as like a, a back end for a password manager and signing Git commits. So those videos are going to come out pretty soon. With that said, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer all of them. Like usual, too, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really helps. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video.